And in sport at half past nine, we'll look back on a night to remember for Scotland at Hampden Park. Yes, after these scenes, the ones that we can't stop watching, we'll assess the threat of Serbia, who we meet in the Euro 2020 playoff final. It's Friday night. Hello and welcome to the night. But before that, here's tonight's sport with Connie. We're still smiling. Well, I certainly am. It might have been dramatic. It might have had us all on the edge of our seat, but Scotland did get a win. We're still smiling about this. Yes, I'm actually surprised I'm even here after last night. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> Hands still shaking. Very much so, yes. If you're anything like me, you're maybe just coming down off the ceiling or perhaps from behind the sofa. That was definitely me after last night's Scotland match at Hamden. The uh, national team now have a chance to make history. That's the message from manager Steve Clark after their dramatic penalty shootout victory over Israel. It means that if Scotland beats Serbia next month, the national team will qualify for a major international tournament for the first time since 1998. Just let that sink in. Jonathan Sutherland reports. BBC News. And as you can imagine, the players were pretty pleased with themselves after that one. Captain Andy Robertson tweeted this one. Martin Army. Indeed. Um, up next for Scotland, as you heard there from Jonathan, is Serbia. But what danger lies in wait for us? Let's head there and find out with Serbian football journalist Nebojka Markovic. Good evening to you. Good evening to you too. First of all, congratulations for making it through to the final. Um, what lies in wait for Scotland? What can we expect from Serbia? Well, you can... Yeah, yeah, us too. Um, you talk about poor results and poor qualifiers, but you guys know how to qualify for a tournament. 2018, of course, you were at the World Cup. Should you use that experience perhaps in this match? Should we, we be worried about that? Will Serbia feel as though they're favourites going into this match? Um, yeah, and then he, he was the hero. Tell us a little bit about Serbia then. What does football mean to people there? Well, as well. It's only been 24 hours, of course, before uh, since last night. But have you managed to do any homework on Scotland? Anyone that you're worried about player-wise? Uh, well, oh, great. Now to golf, and Scotland's Grant Forrest is holding his own at the W, the BMW PGA Championship. Easy for me to say. At Wentworth, he's eight under par after the second round of the European Tour event in Surrey. Four shots off the leaders, Shane Lowry and Matthew Fitzpatrick. And just one last piece of football news to bring you. Dunfermline and Falkirk were in action in the League Cup. Uh, Dunfermline winning 2-0, the last I saw. Oh, good victory for Multitasking you. Multitasking there, do you like that? <laughs> oh. I, do you know what, I think I can't be alone in this. There'll be so many Scotland fans. I was so excited jumping about my living room last night when they got those five penalties that I almost forgot we're not at yes. the Euros yet. <laughs> we're, we're still a to long way to go. We've still got another <laughs> game. And if it's anything like that last night, Scotland, they're going to put us through potentially you know, a bit of a journey. There's always this way, though, isn't there? Every single pe uh, person that I speak to is always like, well, this is how we do it. We get to the final, we take ourselves to the precipice of victory, and then we don't manage. But I feel something in my water. Oh. I feel this time it that's, might be different. That's not what your Serbian interview said. You didn't miss a beat when you asked who's going to win. I hope you are right, Connie. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Edinburgh, Will and Mills.